Welcome friends. We are your hosts, Sandy and Wade, baby best friends turned husband and wife and business partners. This podcast is for the dreamers, the movers and shakers, and those who seek to attract their dream life. Strap in, getting magnetic in three, two, one. Like attracts like. If you see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. You just decide what it's going to be, who you're going to be, how you're going to do it. And then from that point, the universe is going to get out your way. This moment in time, this is your time to rise. Welcome back to the Getting Magnetic show with Sandy and Wade. We are pumped. Fired up. Fired up for our conversation today with one of our dear friends. He's become a dear friend, but we look to bring people on to this podcast that have added a tremendous amount of value to our lives, but the lives of so many others, and then look to bring them on this platform and reach you guys. And so we're super pumped to have our friend Daniel Kimbley on, also known as Dr. Daniel. That's right. He lives here in Orange County, right near us. And he's a, a great friend of ours, but he's also a husband, a father to Coco, who's one and a half now. One, almost one and a half. Almost now. one and a half. And he is a school teacher turned chiropractor. And he is he moves different. You know how we talk about like we love connecting with people. Most people zig, they zag. He moves different even in his practice, in his career, in his life. And he's just one of those rad human beings that we just had to have on on the show and just have an awesome conversation with. So, Dr. Dan, what's going on today? I got to tell you guys, super honored. I know I interviewed you a while ago. And when I saw you guys were doing a podcast, I knew you would crush it. And so, yeah, super stoked to be here. Can't say like how grateful I am to be on board and be with you guys. So thank you so much for having me to start off with. So happy that you're here. Yeah, I am so excited for people to hear your story. I feel like you're an absolutely incredible storyteller. <laughs> I mean, you just accepted that, right? <laughs> you're like, I will take that. <laughs> I've, done a lot, I've done a lot of work, so it does not come naturally. It's like been like, <laughs> like literally six, seven years of practice. So, so I just want our friends in the Getting Magnetic community to fall in love with you the same way we have. So I would love for you to share like who you are. Where were you raised? Tell us about your upbringing. Like okay. how did you meet wifey? Yeah. Like how did you get into chiropractic? And we're, I'm going to pick pieces of your story apart and ask questions and I might need you to tell the ayahuasca story. <laughs> yeah, whatever point. whatever you need, I'm happy to share. <laughs> I'll open book with you guys. So so my name is Dr. Daniel Kimbley. I live in Dana Point, practice here right here in Dana Point. I ride my bike to the office almost every single day except for today because it's raining. So anyway, long story short, I'll just start at kind of the beginning. So I grew up it's really funny. I had this interesting revelation not too long ago because everybody always assumes that like I had always been like this. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important for people to understand that like I grew up in a home that I didn't know this at the time. I like had to do a lot of reflection recently about it. But like I grew up in a home where we did not have central air conditioning. Like we had one window air conditioning unit in our house and this is in Indiana like never had central heat, like we had space heaters in our home. So like to say that we didn't come from money mm -hmm. is like very, very real for me. Like mm -hmm. my parents always provided for us, but we did not come from money. So, you know, my journey was kind of like this is like, I grew up in this place where we didn't have a lot of money. I had friends around me who did have money and I never was raised with really a money mindset. I wanted to help people. And I kind of knew that all the way through like high school. I hung out with a lot of friends. I was a partier. So I used lots of drugs in high school. Fortunately, the only drug I never used was heroin, basically. So like I was a partier in high school, to say the least. Most people don't know that part of my story. But it allowed me this place to realize. So my senior year, I realized that like all of my friends were kind of falling away and drug rehab, house arrest, probation, and I realized that like, this isn't the life for me, but I still didn't want to go to college. So my dad basically forced me to go to college. I didn't know what I wanted to major in. I only applied to one college, hoping I wouldn't get accepted. I wanted to be the assistant manager at the oil chain shop I was working at. And there's like all these details. So I'll try to keep it short. But basically, I got accepted to school. And then pretty quickly, I was like, well, what am I going to do? Like I got accepted. And I realized that college curriculum is totally different. Like I had a lot of autonomy in what classes I took, what I got to study, what I got to research. And I realized that like I was really good at helping people with English. So I decided, hey, this is a perfect foray into being able to teach high school English and help other people. So there's a bunch of details within that that I'll kind of leave out for the sake of time for you guys. But I've learned a lot about the teaching and like there's a thing called the hidden curriculum. And as I learned these things, I really realized that like I want to go to a community and teach 
and help people who really need help. So I taught in a very urban school district by choice. I basically tried to, like a bunch of schools tried to poach me and they're like, hey, what can we do to get you to come to our school and teach? And so I chose like a really low socioeconomic status school, loved what I was doing, but realized as I kind of went on a health journey, because I was never the health guy, like I said, I was the drug guy in high school. Mm -hmm. um, I started realizing I need to take care of my body. So for taking care of my body, that looked like one, starting to just eat clean and work out for the first time seriously ever. And at that point, it was like bro workout. So I was doing <laughs> chest and tries, back and buys, like the whole deal, just straight bro workouts. I knew nothing about exercise. And that awakened something within me where then I started eating healthy. And my version, like I shared a little bit ago when we were doing our live video, was that I thought like if I eat salads and I'm eating like corn tortilla chips and stuff that was like kind of moderately better, but I had no drinking vitamin water I thought was healthy, all these things. And I slowly started to become the health guy when I was teaching. And students are like, hey, like I would have kids show up to my classroom in the morning, like, Mr. Kimberly, is this granola bar healthy for me to eat? And I would like read the ingredients and be like, nah, dude, it has this in it. Like <laughs> there are better options if you're really trying to perform. So this came to the place where like I became the health dude at our school and I realized there was a huge incongruency. So you ask about Heather and this is kind of where Heather comes into the mix. So my second year of teaching, who is now my wife, Heather, her and I met at a uh, catered New Year's party is what it was. So it was this big New Year's bash. And I got in an argument with her best friend. Long story short, Heather and I ended up hitting it off by the end of the night. And we talked about two things, CrossFit and chiropractic. <laughs> and those are like the only two things that we talked about. So pretty quickly, Heather was finishing up her physical therapy license. And she was working at a chiropractor's office running the front desk. And she's like, dude, you're eating healthy. You're exercising. She's like, you're passionate about learning about the brain and like helping these kids. She's like, you need to go see this chiropractor. And my story in my head to that point had been, if you're not old and you don't have back pain, you don't go to a chiropractor mm. because then you have to go for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. So I realized that like something was different. It took her a whole year to convince me to go in and see this guy. So I hear him speak. And the first thing he said is that your body knows how to heal itself. And it made me flash back to all these times that I'd had in high school where even though I was like the substance user, I still told my friends, like, I don't need Tylenol for a headache. Like my body knows how to heal itself. Mm -hmm. So I'd always had this belief in me. I didn't know where it came from. And long story short, I heard him say this and I'm like, there's a group of 60 people in this room who all believe the same thing that I've known to be true my whole life. And all my friends thought I was crazy about. So long story short, fell in love with it, started asking questions as I got under chiropractic care for myself. This passion about the brain and helping people grew to like an entirely new level and things that I just started seeing all these holes in my life, like where I was sucking as a husband, where I was sucking as an athlete, where people around me were doing things that I once did that I was like, those are not my habits anymore. And what it really boils down to is like, I could have settled and been making okay money as a teacher and like went into administration and all those things. But as a result of chiropractic care, I was never in any pain when I started, by the way, I got to a place where I had to quit teaching. And it was all because I knew that there was more purpose in my life. Like there was a higher sense of passion, purpose, and I wanted to make a bigger impact on more people. Like in the classroom, I was affecting kids. I wanted to affect whole families. And chiropractic was my vehicle to do that. And so Heather and I got married in June of 2014, sold my house, moved to Georgia in October of 2014, and then graduated chiropractic school December of 2017. And then we opened our practice in February of 18. And here we are, we're about to have our three-year anniversary. There's so many details in there that I mm. can share, but that's like the long story short version of how we got here. I love your story. And as someone just like listening to that whole story, it's funny because I've heard that story before, but mm -hmm. it's just when you get to know someone, you see them weekly and you just like, you kind of forget about the backstory. So yeah. it's always like cool to hear it again and validate like, wow, like you've been through some hard things and I just see you as the way you are now. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? We always see person in front of us and yep. it's like, well, you have a past. I love your story. And I love that. I'm a big believer that when you're seeking something, it's seeking you. For sure. And it's like, you weren't seeking, you liked what you were doing. Like you weren't really necessarily seeking something, but you trusted Heather's guidance. And after a year, you're like, okay, I'll check this out. Yep. Right. I'm someone, I've gone to a chiropractor since I was five years old. You know this, yeah. but like my family's always been huge about it. And so I'm used to the type of chiropractic that's like, cracking and popping and aggressive and like almost like hurts and you're mm -hmm. like bruised after like that's what I grew up with and thought was normal and then I've been working with you now for over a year coming I think the first six months I came twice a week and now yeah. I come once a week right but it, I just want you to talk about 
And as we go through, our story is going to bounce all over the place, but I want you to touch on for our listeners, like how would you describe your type of care? Because I feel like you have such a specific way of loving on people that's different than any chiropractor I've ever like worked with. Could I jump in too first, even before like getting into the technique, like your story is so interesting. And I think in a lot of people's lives, it's, it's easy to fall into, right? Like, all right, I went to school for this. This was my first job. I'll just like stay in it. Like you mentioned in a few places, like, let me be the assistant manager at, at the oil change place. Like, oh, you know what? I'm a, I'm a teacher. Like, let me just stay in that. Let me do that. Really cool things. Was there a moment where you were like, whoa, was there a moment in your life? Like I need to pursue this. And when I say that chiropractic, and was there a moment where you're like, I think this could be my purpose or passion or calling. Like, I think a lot of people in life are seeking, what is my purpose, passion, calling? Like, was there that moment for you or was it this gradual experience? No, I mean, like there was certainly a moment. I will say, so the moment was, is I went to what they call Life Leadership Weekend. So Mm. Life University is a school that I graduated from. No joke. The name of the school is Life University. And like, Sounds like everyone we needs give, to go there. We give people life, right? <laughs> so it's very vitalistic centered. Like the principle of the school, the founding principle is that life is self-healing, self-maintaining, self-regulating, which means that we can heal ourselves. So I went to this school and this is when I was teaching. So we went to visit. It's called a Life Leadership Weekend. And the experience that I had there were like, again, all these people who were like-minded, who were essentially, I don't even want to say bought or sold into because it's like, it's the truth, right? It's like your body knows how to heal itself. You don't have to wake up in the morning and tell your heart to beat Mm. or like your knees to heal if you scrape your knees, like Mm. your body just does it. So there's this whole group, like hundreds of people who are excited about being chiropractors and there are chiropractors there who are like talking to the students who had been there forever. It's a recruiting event. But there was a part of me that in my heart, I was like, this is a cult and I need to run (laughs) another way. But there was also a draw and it was the first time in my life that I was like, I'm willing to risk everything to do this. Mm. And there's a chance that I could completely fail. Do you think people need to do that in I, order to step into they're, what they're dude, supposed the to do? The only way, so I interviewed one of my friends, Dr. Sarah Lutz on a podcast. And she said this, dude, one of the most profound things I've ever heard ever. She's like, the universe will leave you breadcrumbs, right? Or God or whatever you want to call it. Mm. will always leave you breadcrumbs. She's like, but she's like, those breadcrumbs will stop. And she's like, when they stop, you just have to trust that the next step, because she's Mm -hmm. like, it'll lead you up to the edge of the cliff and you won't get anything until you take the next step. And you'll realize that there's the invisible bridge there that's going to protect you and allow you to get to the place that you want to grow. Chills all over my body. Magical, right? So like this, dude, then this is what I love about what I do is like the same one I'm talking about the body healing itself. Those chills is like, it's just the truth. Like Mm -hmm. your soul, your heart, your whole being knows that it's true. It's not not something that you have to sell somebody or convince someone of. Mm -hmm. And that's why I love it so much. So the moment for me was that leadership weekend. But then when I stepped back into my classroom after, I really just started like looking at my students and realizing like, dude, if that kid could get adjusted, if I could send him to the school nurse, but the school nurse was a chiropractor and they could get adjusted and come back to my class, game changing results. From just a school perspective, like Mm -hmm. an educational perspective, not even the other stuff that we work with now. So that's when I really, and it was like, it was literally a virus in the best way possible where it just completely infected me. And that's all I thought about people's Mm. posture. How would this benefit this kid? Or how would this benefit this kid? Or how would this? And then I started learning more about the brain and it opened up this thing where like, I got so incongruent with teaching English. I was getting a paycheck to not teach English. I was just teaching straight health at this point. (laughs) Mindset to these kids. And I'm like, I realized that like all the content that we're taught in school literally means almost nothing. Mm. And I'm not discrediting any of the teachers. I believe that like teachers should make way more than they do. That has nothing to do with that. It's just the content is not what matters. It's a set of skills and those skills can come from how the brain functions. Mm. And so to kind of, if you want me to transition into your question is basically where I live. I live in a, and when I say live, what I mean is like how I practice is very, very different. So I take a brain-based approach to the body. So what we know, I think everybody listening can agree with this is that your brain controls every single function in your body, controls how your stomach digests food. It tells your heart to beat, your lungs to breathe, your cells to regenerate, all these things. Your nervous system controls how your DNA replicates or doesn't replicate and genetics and all these things, right? It's all sex life, sex life, all of it. Okay. So the nervous system controls your hormonal system, et cetera, et cetera. So if the nervous system is not functioning well, and when I say not functioning well, what I mean is stressed out, 
Like you can't be in stress state and use your energy towards stress and anxiety and protection and be in growth state at the same time. Mm. So what I look for when I work with people put very simply is where is their body in stressed out state, anxiety state, a breakdown state versus a growth, health, creation, prosperity, abundance state in the body. And we do this and there's a very specific and we can get into the science if you want me to of like there's a neurophysiological pathway that this happens through. But long story short, when we take people out of stress and into healing, they have no choice but just like I experienced to get more passionate and more on purpose and have a better sex life, Wade. And that's like, what we're all going and for, just right? express, oh, express health, <laughs> vitality, live more passion, all the things that matter and all the things that make life super exciting and super grand and super beautiful. Mm. I love that. And going back to what Sandy was saying, that I had that same kind of thought process as both of you. One, Dr. Dan was saying he thought of chiropractor is like, okay, you go if you're hurt and you have a bad back and you're older. That was kind of my thoughts too. I never knew what chiropractic even was. I was aware of it. Meanwhile, Sandy's been going since she was five with that typical like crack jerk thing. And not to say that does not work, but just Daniel does it in a different way. So when I first met Dr. Daniel, I had that same thought, like, all right, I've been an athlete, like I'm peak physical shape. I take care of my health. Like, do I need chiropractic. And, but I was like, you know what? I trust this guy because I see his life. I see the fruits of his life and the people in his life. And like, I just want to get to know him better, but also what he does. And so it's like, you know what? I feel amazing, but I don't want to take this reactive approach to health. And I think in America, unfortunately, that's what we do. We subscribe, we treat symptoms. We don't look proactively to look at root causes or how can I flourish even better? So when I first connected with Dr. Dan, he was like, no, no, it's not about necessarily the pains in your body. Like, let's make sure your body is operating as best as you can. So when I went to see him, when have you ever been to a healthcare provider and they start asking about your goals and your visions for your life? And he starts asking us about our visions for our life. And I'm like, okay, I can get down with this. I think about this stuff a lot, actually. No one's ever, <laughs> no one, ever, especially someone like a chiropractor has never asked me that. So we start talking about that and he starts connecting the work he's going to do within our body to our outside world, our aspirations, our visions. And that was different. That was where I was like, I'm in, nothing hurts, but let's do this. Because then he started to explain, this is proactive. Like, wait, I'm going to unlock parts of your body to be able to do this better, that better. And so I love that approach. I want to correct you. You just said nothing hurts. When you came to him, That's your true. main focus was your what left knee because of when you play basketball. Yes. And what did you tell me yesterday when you came home from basketball? Yes. So actually, I told Dr. Dan, I go, actually, if I could say one thing, I have inflammation in my left knee and I can't play basketball and I love basketball. If there's one thing, like I'd love to be able to play basketball pain free. He's like, I got you. And nothing happens overnight. It's not like you just get this adjustment and the next day I'm playing basketball, but over care, I've been playing recently and I've been balling out and my knee does not hurt at all. And I'm like so stoked on life because like this is one of my passions and I can now do it free flowing and you realize it and you tie it back to like, whoa, Dr. Dan was like, all right, have a vision. You're going to be playing basketball pain free. We're going to get you there. And now here it is in reality. Really cool. And you, you also shared a cool story. I don't even know if you remember this, but like one of the things that I've always, I don't even want to say preached, but like one of the things that I've always been passionate about is seeing people who like you rip six pack, like obviously eat well, everything you already do right. But you came in, remember you guys were training for the West Coast Classic. Yes. And so Wade is training like harder than I've ever seen you train. Probably <laughs> yeah. the hardest you've trained in your life, right? Yep. Yep. And then COVID hit. So that training all got canceled. You guys stopped training hard. Mm -hmm. And then like three months into that, I think you were like, dude, I've been just PRing everything in the gym. And yes. I haven't even been training this hard. And that's a whole nother, like to me, I got super stoked for mm -hmm. you because like, obviously you work super hard in the gym, mm -hmm. but it was just a testament. And we talked about how long you had been under care at that point, which I think had been four months. Yep. So like it was this easy transition where you were already peak performance, but we took that peak to another level where you're like still setting PRs. And mm -hmm. obviously again, not discrediting, like you eat well, you take care of right. yourself. You already work your butt off in the gym, but just like pushing it, it's just turning the needle that much more for the person who is already feels like they all kind of have it dialed in. So that was a super cool win as well. That I was a huge that. win. That was next level for me. That realization was amazing. I was like, wow, this guy, my dear friend, and now he works on my body, is helping me take my life to the next level. And I didn't even, I don't even really know it, or you don't necessarily see it every day, but you trust the process. And overall, you realize like, dang, this, yeah. this is epic. One of my favorite things about the first time I came in for a consultation and I was like very skeptical. Remember mm -hmm. you kind of called me out a couple of times. You're like, hey, you need to like 
let down, like I can tell you, maybe you think this doesn't totally work. Yeah. I need you to like, trust me because if your guard is up, like all my work isn't going to work. I was like, okay, I love that. He just called me out a little bit. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's my type of person. But I remember the first time I had the consultation with you, it was like an hour meeting. And one of the things you did, which I mean, again, I've gone to a chiropractor like over 20 years of my life. So I'd never had this happen, but one of your tests that you did, I think it was like a cognitive brain function mm-hmm. test was I closed my eyes and marched in place. And I was so confident I did not move an inch. Like I was like, I'm going to show him. Like, I don't need this. And I opened my eyes and I was nine feet across the room and facing the wall. Like literally I probably had what moved like 90 degrees. Would that be the best way to describe it? Yeah. And I opened up and I was like in absolute shock. And you were like, okay, so will you, I'll let you explain what you said. Same thing happened to me. You basically told me that my brain wasn't firing or I don't know. Yeah. So I mean like the whole point of that is like, so this is where I'm different, right? And again, I'm not hating on anyone. It's just a different, different approach, different philosophy. I do things very, very differently. I'm not a great fit for a lot of people, but the people that we are a good fit for like the top performers, high producers, and that's okay. I'm cool with being that. So one of the things that people don't necessarily understand is that there are ways to measure where your brain is functioning. And again, your brain controls everything that happens in your body. So with a simple test like that, like I do these neurological tests that seem like silly games or like party tricks, but they give me, (laughs) they give me so much insight into how your brain is talking to the rest of your body. So to explain like why you went forward a bunch of floor planks and then you're like facing one of the walls is because when you take your eyes out of the equation, your brain is still talking to your body and your body's talking to your brain to say, okay, I know what the task is. I need to march in place. And then your brain sends messages out that where it's like, I think we're in place right now. Let's try this. And the body's like, yeah, yeah, keep doing that. Keep doing that. But then if those communication pathways, because of that stress, the brain can't talk to the body the way that it should. So it gets confused and it literally makes up messages. Mm -hmm. And so I would think of it like if you had a map of Dana Point or Laguna Niguel or Orange County from the seventies is like, you would have a hard time getting anywhere because there are so many more roads now. Mm -hmm. And so the same is true with your body. Your brain has a map of your body. So what all we're doing every time we adjust you is we're upgrading the map so that your brain knows eyes open or closed that your body's perfectly in place because it's talking better to everything. And so we're just literally upgrading that map every day. Another good example, a silly example is like if you've ever been driving and your navigation says, hey, go up to the stoplight, turn left, do a U-turn and then turn right into the parking lot. And you're like, there's a turn lane right here. I can just turn left into the parking lot. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. We're just creating a more efficient pathway within the brain so that your body out of stress mode can function at that high, fast level. I love it so much. And then you do like progress, like what was it, every six or eight weeks? Yeah. So we do, we do six weeks, 12 weeks. And then I do different plans with people. We do three months, six months, and then a year. And we kind of like ease people into those. So it's six weeks, 12 weeks, and then we do six months. And then we normally do one every year after that. There are exceptions for people who are like pretty severe that we do more of them along the way, but we can measure. We measure the nervous system with a scan. We do all these neurological tests. And then the cool part is you guys can sit here and have a conversation of like, this is where I've literally noticed, not necessarily from a pain perspective, but other places as well, Mm -hmm. that my body is just, I'm thriving. Yeah. I love that. And then tell me too, because I remember I came from this, I don't want to say old school thinking, but the thinking of, I was like, well, when are we doing Mm x-rays? And you were kind of like, well, that's not really my approach. Can you explain why? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question. So the reason that I don't do x-rays is because from the analysis that I use and then what we're taught in school of like, if you do a thorough exam, you can basically rule out the need for a lot of those things. So if there are other healthcare practitioners listening I'm not discrediting x-rays. I think they do come into play. I've certainly sent people out to get films before, but the only reason that I've ever sent someone in my office out to get films is to solely to show them that they actually didn't have anything wrong, that it was much more emotionally connected. Wow. And I would say that 90% of the people I take care of, their aches, pains, issues are not physical. They're actually emotional that show up physically in the body, wow. which is a totally different. And so there's like all these different things that we do that I can check for and that I take the time to check for that other docs are just like, yeah, lay on the table and I'll push down the high spots and then spank you on the butt on the way out. Yeah. We do not do that approach here. Wow. When I first did my yoga teacher training like five years ago, one of the things that was always said was your issues live in your tissues. And that like really, for me, you know, my hips are like my main point of like tension. I feel like that's where we hold so many of our memories and traumas Mm -hmm. and just different things. And I find that to be so true that we like cling on to it and like 
even when you think about a memory or something from your childhood or your past, like you will notice your body literally like tensing up and almost like re-mimicking yep. how you were in that time and space sequence. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. I love this. Walk stuff. me through high level. When I think about Dr. Daniel, everything he does in his life, and if you've ever heard of a blue ocean strategy. So most of us compete in the red ocean. Like if you're going setting out to be a chiropractor and you do what all other chiropractors do, you're, you're going to be competing with other chiropractors. Dr. Daniel, his care is different. And I want you to go into that, but first kind of touch on this. Like, so then a blue ocean is, I'm not going to go compete with everyone else. Like, I believe this is the optimal way to do it. And I'm going to go kind of create this because this is what I believe in. Like more in. of a niche. Yeah. Yeah. So you like kind of create your own lane or where you aren't like necessarily competing with everyone else. So I think you've got a blue ocean care and service and business, but High level, what's different about what you do and what goes on in the body than like the typical snap, crackle, pop? Because I used to be like, I don't want to go get jerked around right. and cracked. Like, yeah, so I do know popping, cracking. I use an instrument. And this is like, they, I would be getting into the weeds if I talked about it too much. But there are different brain waves. One of them is beta. There's three different phases of beta. One is like focus and motivation. Two is high energy, but bordering on anxiety. And then the third is like really, really high frequency, which is like, anxiety, super depression. Mm -hmm. And so what we're doing is literally every adjustment by using this instrument that I use, it puts a vibration into the system that slows down those beta waves back to a place where we're focused, motivated, driven. And there's a bunch more detail in that. So, and then the other piece of it too, is like understanding that we're emotional beings. And like you said, your issues live in your tissues. It's so true. I said 90% of the people I take care of low back issues, for instance, usually has something to do with finances. People have next stuff going on. It's usually being inflexible. So that would be like... What about hips? Hips uh, hips can be a bunch of different stuff. Mm. Hips are like that. I mean, there's like, if you don't feel grounded or like there's so much going on, a lot mm -hmm. of times where people will feel stuff in their hips because they're like, I feel like I don't have control over anything. Mm. And it's different for everybody. So like, that's not a hard and fast rule. Right. But what I see with people is that as I start taking care of them, we can start to have conversations and bring like... I'm not a therapist, so I'm not talking to them about their issues, but bringing little bits of awareness that allow people to heal much more rapidly through using this instrument that puts a light vibration into the joints of the spine. And then also understanding that there's a, this big emotional component and kind of blending the work that I do from an energetic perspective and a very physical adjusting perspective. And this is why when I take care of people, sometimes they leave and they're like, dude, I had to cry in my car for 15 minutes before mm. I could drive away. And then on the other end of that spectrum is like, the guy who's like, I've never done a million dollars in sales in a week. And I just did a million dollars in sales. And I've been under your care for four weeks. It's the only thing that I've changed. And it's like, yeah, because we put your brain in a state that allows you to perform and allows you to process the stuff to be more conscious, more aware, more uplifting, more positive, more focused, motivated human being. Mm. I absolutely love it. I love the passion. I love the passion. You can tell like when people are passionate about their craft, their trade, their profession, you're like, that's who I need to align with. All right, I want to pivot. I don't like using the word failure because one time I heard Kobe say, one of my mentors, Kobe Bryant, he said, failure doesn't exist. Yep. You know, it's only failure if you don't learn from it, if you don't get up the next day and use what you learned and go attack it again. So rather than what's your biggest failure, what's your biggest learning lesson in life? Just something that sticks out to you. And I know that's like, oh, I'm putting him on the spot here. On the spot, very much so. <laughs> I would say the biggest, the biggest learning lesson in my life would be... Probably having some people who I thought were mentors and knowing intuitively that it wasn't going to be a good fit, like long term, mm. but trying to force it. Mm. And so another way to say that, and we'll get into the ayahuasca conversation or we can if you want mm -hmm. to, I would say one of the biggest lessons that I've learned thus far, and I just like closed this chapter of the book literally last week. So it's funny that you're asking this is realizing that when your heart speaks or you could say when God speaks to you or the universe speaks to you, or you just feel this voice that's telling you to do something and you ignore it, it's literally doing the exact opposite of what you should do. Mm. And so like being willing to always listen, even when it's very, very difficult, even whether it doesn't feel like, yeah. Like so it. whether it's like, don't hire that mentor or Hey, maybe like you should pull back a little bit and then consciously talking yourself out of it, like your heart or your intuition, when you get those goosebumps, like that's the truth mm. period. Mm -hmm. So knowing that, your body will speak to you and give you subtle clues that, hey, you're in alignment or you're out of alignment. And I really, truly believe that the biggest lesson is kind of letting go of that like conscious control and knowing that there's something, a bigger power that's at play 
that will allow you for the abundance that you want, for the success that you want, for the relationships that you want, whatever you're seeking, it's already seeking you. Mm. But you got to be willing to give up some of the control and just let those things flow to you. Mm, I have chills. I do too. I heard someone say, let go and let God. Yeah. And that might not resonate with everyone, but that is exactly yep. like what it is. It's let go and let God or sure. let whatever. Just let it manifest. Oh. oh, I love that so much. Speaking of, actually, no. He mentioned the ayahuasca. We love that story. We go like, there. let's dive into that. Some people might know what that is. Some people might not. It's a plant medicine, but explain to us a little bit about that experience. Yeah. So I got to give a big disclaimer is like, I'm not suggesting that anyone go out this weekend and do ayahuasca. <laughs> um, if you're going to do this, you need to find someone who is a professional at doing these journeys. So, what I mean by that is like, our shaman who we use has trained since he is like 10 years old to do these journeys for people. So this is a lifelong of training for this guy to be 30 years old before he could like lead his first ceremony on his own. Mm -hmm. And so I always let people know, like if you're going up and hanging out with somebody's basement and using ayahuasca in LA, in LA, probably not, (laughs) not the move if you're trying to have major breakthroughs in your life. So anyway, (laughs) after the disclaimer, I will say that, yeah, I mean, there's so much I could talk like this is like three bottles of wine, Mm -hmm. like a whole night of explanation. But I would say long story short, it's a plant medicine. And the whole gist of it is to like, like it showed me that there's a spiritual nature to all of us Mm. and that, you know, I used to very much identify as when I was teaching, especially like, I would say I was atheist and not religious, not, there was no creator. Like when we died, we were just in the ground and that was it. Mm -hmm. And it really opened my eyes to the fact that no, there's another part of us that's spiritual and it is very, very real. Mm. And that's what I talk about when I talk about like giving up control, like so much of my life, I've tried to be in control of every single little detail. And the more that I can let myself go and just be, the more things come to me. And so like an interesting example of this would be like, if Coco is sweeping all of her food off of her tray, Coco's my daughter, by the way. So like when she's eating lunch, sweeping all of her food onto the floor, I'm super OCD. I want everything to be clean. So I'm like, no, Coco, you got to stop. And it gives me all this anxiety, but realizing like, I can't control her. Like the reality is that she's going to sweep her food onto the floor. She's a toddler. Like that's Mm -hmm. what toddlers do. (laughs) So I used to tell myself the story that I needed to be in control and she needed to stop because it's what I wanted and realizing like, it's not my thing to control. And also the only thing that's giving me anxiety is my thought about what the way I think reality should be. Mm -hmm. And so just giving in and realizing like, dude, she's a toddler. That's what toddlers do. That's how they learn and letting it flow. And life has been so much more abundant for us in that aspect. Mm -hmm. So I would say that's like the biggest lesson is just, if you can give up control, magic, life is beautiful. That's what yes. it comes down to. So your shaman, did, if I remember correctly, did he come fly in from Peru? Yeah, he came from, we flew him in from Peru and allowed him to do our whole ceremony. And by the way, let me just share a little bit about the ceremony. It was an eight day thing. So we do the first day, we do a blessing to the earth, no medicine drinking involved. Mm-hmm. It's just a blessing to the earth and setting intentions. The next day in the evening, you do a ceremony, then you take a day off. And then you do another ceremony the next evening and then you take a day off and then you do a daytime ceremony and you take a day off on the end. So this allows you to fully process Mm. all the things that are happening during. And I believe that's super important. Like if you're going to go up to the mountains for a day and then come back the same day and get right back into the grind, you're probably not going to get a lot of life lessons and ability to integrate what you're learning Mm -hmm. in those journeys. So I think it's important to like honor these traditions that they pass down from generation to generation. Wow. So it was you and Heather and like three other couples? I think it was four other couples total. So there's 10 of you plus the shaman? Yep. 10 of okay. us plus shaman. Yep. And aren't there like certain rules leading up to ayahuasca? Like you're not supposed to have sex for three weeks before. Yeah. So you're not supposed to eat meat or something, right? Yeah. We could eat meat, but there's like basically the whole time we were there, we we're not allowed to eat beef at all. So there are very specific things that they want you to do. And it's basically all, it's an understanding of the chemistry of the body and how the body works and processes these different plants that you basically drink. So it's all about like being as cleansed mentally and spiritually as possible before you step into this journey. Mm -hmm. And so that's like, there's all these things. And again, that's why I say it's so important to do it under the guidance of someone who's a legit professional who's trained their whole life to do it. Totally. Yeah. What I hear in that experience is... When we think of like ayahuasca, if you've ever heard what it is, you might be like, oh my gosh, it's this drug. It's, it is a plant, which I love. It's from the earth. Yep. But we think of like this type of experience as this exogenous thing where I put something foreign in my body and that is what makes me think this or that or go through this experience. 
But really, I see it just as almost like a vehicle for inner work to basically do deep inner work. And especially when, you, like you said, you do it over a number of days. You don't just like go on this retreat or go into the mountains and then right back into the hustle bustle, like something where you can spend time doing deep inner work. When do we ever just kind of be in ourselves, in our thoughts, in our minds, in our bodies for days at a time and really letting that all sink in. So I see it as this experience to do that deep inner work. And especially I think this day and age, everyone's so busy, especially as we become adults, we don't get the opportunity to do that. So it's almost just this this vehicle to bring you into that and do that deep work. Yeah. I mean, that's literally what it is, is deep work. And even my wife is a great example of like Heather in the beginning, when we started having the conversation of like, babe, I want to do this. She's like, I am not going into the mountains with you and your friends to do drugs, <laughs> like period. And so what she realized after meeting Carlo and like doing these phone calls is she's like, this is something so much bigger because it is, it's a way to do inner work. And that's the thing too, is I don't, some people would associate, I would say that this is actually a true medicine. Like mm -hmm. anything else that we consider medicine, Tylenol, prescription meds, whatever, mm -hmm. is not medicine. Those are drugs yeah. with very, very negative side effects. This medicine is healing. Like mm -hmm. just like I adjust someone and start to let their body heal itself, mm -hmm. this medicine allows you to heal you. Yes. And it just allows you the place to let go, literally let your ego go away so you can see the realities of your own life. And life is a bigger picture. And that's really what I gained out of it was like, I realized that there was a greater power at play mm -hmm. that I didn't need to be in control all the time. And when my anxiety went away from wanting to control everything, so much more has shown up in my life. And it's crazy. Like we did this four years ago now. It's not like I did it yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I'm still getting lessons today of like how important that one big lesson is of just give up your willing or want or need to control every little detail of your life mm -hmm. and just let spirit, the universe, innate, whatever you want to call it, God work through you and magic will happen. That so is powerful. Good. I love that story. And I know we could go on forever. Yeah. Like I remember over dinner, you told us like some of the stories that yep. went down. I was like, oh my gosh. That's another episode. Yeah. I want to transition into Heather, the love of your life. Talk about Heather. Love of my life. Oh man, this girl's amazing. So I mean, I can fully say like, I would not be sitting here without her. Mm -hmm. Like period. She got me into chiropractic. She encouraged me to quit teaching. I don't even think she ever said it. She's like, maybe we should just go to this leadership weekend. Was totally on board, like supported us through chiropractic school, supported us. Like we moved to California, specifically Dana Point. I mean, we're like coastal living with no money and Heather supported us until we get the practice up and running. So she's to, a boss. Dude, she's a like boss. downright plain and simple. Like we would not be here if it weren't for her. Wow. And she made some massive sacrifices. Like she had her dream job as a physical therapy, working on college level pro athletes. Mm. And she was willing to give it all up because she saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. And wow. really what it comes down to is she's just a powerhouse of a woman who is like super quiet and behind the scenes. And she'll probably always be like that, but deserves all the recognition for everything that's happened in my life for sure, because without her, none of this would be possible. Oh, I love me a fellow powerhouse. Yep. <laughs> yes. I know she of delivered course. their sweet baby Coco oh. to all natural birth there. You guys are mentors of ours. We look up to you and look forward to guidance on that. I mean, just the thought and you know, your guys birth story is amazing delivering at home all natural, just absolutely beautiful. And Coco, oh, is just a light in this world. The whole Kimberly family is I love it. So good. I think we should transition into fire round. What do you think? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, we're wrapping up here. Fire round, just quick hitting segment. A couple last few questions. Actually, I've seen this in your life, but what does getting magnetic mean to you? And is there like anything in your life you could point to? Like, I got magnetic to this. Yeah, I mean, I if you think of the concept of magnets, right? It's like they can repel or attract. Mm. And if you talk about strong magnets, like they can pull from, if you think about an MRI, for instance, if you have metal in you, like it will rip metal out of you and rip stuff to the wall. Like it could literally destroy something. So magnets are super powerful. But the interesting thing about them is like, and I think this is going back to the ayahuasca journey of me just like kind of giving up that control and allowing the universe to work is that, Dude, getting magnetic is literally just making one little switch in like your mentality and it will attract everything to you. And so for me, the getting magnetic is like continually check yourself. So you're switching, flipping the magnet around. So it attracts the things that you want versus repelling it. And it's literally as easy as that. It's like going from the vibration of anxiety to one of gratitude or whatever it is, like that's getting magnetic. It's literally just flip, just this tiny little flip or shift or pivot or whatever you want to call it 
that goes from complete repelling the things that you want versus bringing them to you. And it's literally as simple as that. So mm. good. Yeah, I love su- that. Super cool. And that's what, it, and you guys do that, right? It's like, I've seen, it's been cool to watch you grow because when we knew each other at first, like Wade, you weren't even in the business with Sandy yet. Mm-hmm. And so to see how you guys have continually made these pivots into where you are now, it's like, Dude, I don't know very many people that have grown this quickly at this level. And it's because you guys do. You're magnetic. You're magnets for everything that you want in your life. And it just there it has no choice but to come to you. And that's what getting magnetic is all about. Oh, we appreciate that. that. Receive that. You brought up mentors. Fire round question. Importance of mentors. Is it important to have one? And who have been mentors in your life? Uh, one, you have to have mentors. Like for sure. And a mentor is different than a coach. So here's the thing. A coach is going to tell you what to do. You're going to pay them. They're going to tell you what to do. I truly believe that a mentor is somebody who's like, hey, you're going to watch me do this and then just follow my footsteps. I'm going to show you what to do by mm-hmm. the way that I act and you get to choose whether you follow and watch what I do or not. So mm-hmm. like everybody needs to have mentors. I wish I, if I could go back now, the one thing that I would change in my life, I would not change what I did in high school. I would not change my desire to be an assistant manager at the oil chain shop. I would change none of it. The one thing that I would change is realizing the importance of mentors way earlier because Mm. the earlier you do it, the easier it is to get them for free. Mm. And I think it's such an important thing to learn because then you get to see people who have already done what you want to do and you can just follow in the footsteps and see like, all right, those are successful habits. Maybe I should implement some of those. And so any person under the age of 18, I would say the earlier you find mentors, the more magnetic your life will be mm. for sure. Boom. Mic drop. Um, so then to go off of that is like my greatest mentors, I would have to say in chiropractic school, there's a guy, Dr. Gilles Lamarche. He was a, one of the vice presidents at the university that I went to for chiropractic school. Amazing, amazing human being taught me more about gratitude and service than anybody I've ever met in my life and continues to be a mentor for me just by the way he lives and his being. Garrett Gunderson is another one. This dude just... It took me a year to convince him to even have a conversation with me. And then we put on an event and I made the event special for him and made it worthwhile for him to be there. And long story short, he kind of stepped in and was like, Hey, dude, this is awesome. You're awesome. I want to help you out. And he allowed me to create a vision for this practice that would not have existed without him. Mm. And then lastly, I would honestly say, dude, Garrett J. White is the way this guy lives and the things that he produces and like who he is as a person Every time I'm around him, it's always value. And it's very similar to being around you guys. Mm. And it's just like to see someone come from, I don't want to say nothing, but come from a place of struggle and then build it into this massive, massive empire and still be grounded in like genuinely good human being. It's magical. Love Mm. it. Those are big three. So good. And many, there are many, many more. So if I didn't mention you, like know that they're there. Okay. I love that. What is your favorite book? Oh, Man, I have so You've many. You've given me a few goodies. Yeah. All right. So give me a little bit. Okay. Of, <laughs> What's your but, favorite personal growth book? Personal growth book. Okay. So that was where I was going to go because yeah. there are a couple of different ways I could go if we're talking business versus personal. Honestly, it's a book that I just started and I am for sure not going to read any other book for the rest of this year. Mm. So when I say that, like hear me loud and clear if you're listening to this, I've read like three or four books already this year. I'm not reading anything else the rest of the year. Is it like a this big one book? book or? No. You'll read it over and over. I'm going to read it over and over. And as soon as I'm done, I'm going to start it over. And as soon as I'm done, I'm going to start it over. It's called Loving What Is by Byron Katie. Ooh. And the whole premise of the book is this, is that there's a line of questioning that you can ask yourself or ask other people that will get you to the place that I talked about earlier, where you realize that your thoughts about what is reality are just thoughts Mm -hmm. and it's not reality. Like I talked about, my daughter shouldn't, she shouldn't cry right now. Well, she's a baby and she is crying. So like if I have anxiety that she's crying, I have anxiety because I'm not living in reality. I'm living in a fantasy land of the way things should be. And so she walks you through how to break down. So what you get to is you get to a place with every situation that would trigger you to have these thoughts of anger or rage or anxiety or fear or sorrow or whatever it is and realize that like, life just is and it's beautiful just the way it is Mm -hmm. and it was meant to be that way so then where you get to is a place where you're always in creative gratitude mode and when you're in that place anything you want is going to show up to you Mm -hmm. oh i love it wow okay i'm gonna need to read that book what are you most excited for in life right now i don't know what's coming for us super excited to buy a house we 
Are we going to be neighbors in the Strand? Oh, we're going to be neighbors in the Strand. That was my yes. question. I had a question for you. I threw out an interview sheet. Dan was like, hey, you know how we roll. We just go right into conversation. <laughs> I didn't actually check the interview sheet. I was like, that is perfect. I meant to. I told him. I mentioned it to Heather and then I forgot. Some to people say. love preparing. I think all three of us are just kind of like, let's wing it. That's where everything comes from. One of my questions I had is when are we going to be neighbors in the Strand? When are we going to be neighbors in the Strand? I would say less than six years for sure. Heck yeah. Yes. No questions asked. You guys will probably be there a little bit before us, but that's just the nature of like Daniel practice school is not cheap. Daniel and I <laughs> are investment. Daniel and I are big vision thinkers, <laughs> relatively speaking. Sandy busts in and is like, We're gonna be there next year. Yep. Daniel and I are like, Okay, love the vision, but okay, how? How? <laughs> and she's like, I don't know how, but anyways, I love can't wait to be neighbors. All right, last question before we figure out where we can connect with you. Who should seek chiropractic care? What type of person or what should they be looking for? Anything. I mean, it depends on who you are. I would say if you're looking for everybody needs chiropractic care. Like cool. I, I didn't go into teaching and get out of teaching because I thought like, oh, I want to work with this specific group of like athletes. I got out of teaching because I saw that if every kid had chiropractic care, we would not be the storm that we are in the US. Right? Like people would be clear, people would be connected, people would be healthy. Mm. We wouldn't have this like huge deficit and spending on sick care that we have in the US right mm. now. So like so much of what I got out of was literally just so I could bring this message to more people, which means like everybody needs chiropractic care. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter like that some chiropractors are better than others for sure. And I think that any care is better than none. But for me, who I love working with pregnant moms, because everything that we know about pregnancy mm -hmm. now is that any stress that mom's under, all those stress hormones are affecting baby's brain development mm -hmm. negatively, the more stress that kiddos have. Kids are the next step of that. So if we miss kids when they're while mom is pregnant, then obviously getting them adjusted, clearing their nervous system, allowing them to be functioning as well as possible, as early as possible, even if they don't seemingly have issues now. Like I get kids in all the time where parents are like, can we just like do the exam with them and see what we find? And it's like, sure enough, there's stress on in the system. And it's just preventing them from living out that full passion, purpose, et cetera, that we talked about before. And then the other group that I love working with personally is like entrepreneurs. Mm. Like if you're trying to turn the needle and you're doing everything right, you're meditating, you're exercising, you're eating well, you're taking all the supplements and doing all the biohacks. The foundation of all of those things working really, really well is having a healthy nervous system. I love it. Anyone who's looking to turn that switch on to just up level their life even further in any which way, like boom, if that speaks to you, chiropractic care is right to you. Okay. Where can we connect with you? How do we connect with you? Where are we sitting right now? Where? Give me all the details. Yeah. So my office, my practice is Nexus Family Chiropractic. It's in Dana Point, California. So you can obviously find us on the web at nexusfamilychiropractic.com. We don't do a ton on our website, but if you really want to stay up to date with us and see like what we're really, really all about, Instagram is going to be the best spot for that. We also post on Facebook, but Insta is just a little bit more friendly for us anyway. And so love Insta, those are the main places. And then also the other place, if you're really interested in diving into like specific topics, let's say you're a man who's wondering like, man, you know, I've really been struggling with being a dad. How could chiropractic care help me in that realm? Or how is chiropractic care as a pregnant mama going to help me? Then my podcast is The Nexus Podcast. It's on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, SoundCloud, anywhere you listen to podcasts, it's there. For sure. I love that. So if you're in the Orange County area or surrounding area, you can personally come visit get an introductory, get to know Dr. Dan, see if the care is right for you. Hint, hint, it probably is. But also you can connect with Dr. Dan and all his work he's doing through the podcast. That's what's beautiful. Like you don't restrict yourself just to the surrounding area, which I love. Yep. And I would highly recommend everyone connect with Dr. Dan. He said, you've been an amazing influence in our life. You've helped us a lot, you know, not only physically, but just spiritually and friendship and so we just, what a great conversation. We had an awesome time. Thanks for doing this with us. I love you guys to the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for letting me be it's on so this. so mutual. <laughs> such, such an honor. You guys are the best. Only those that can see the invisible and do the impossible. So remember, you are magnetic.